Welcome to Intello Videos. Rules are convenient tools which can be used to control the experimental conditions when a signal exceeds a user-defined threshold. Rules can be defined for any signal available in a measurement command. For example, the potential of a battery during a charge or discharge cycle. In a rule option, the user has to define the when, it defines the signal on which the rule is applied, and it defines the difference in circumstances needed to trigger the rule. For example, the greater than or less than signs. The for defines the number of consecutive samples required to trigger the rule. The do defines what should happen when the rule condition is met. There are two options. Stop command. The current command is stopped as soon as the rule is triggered and the procedure continues with the next command. Or stop the procedure. The complete procedure is stopped as soon as the rule is triggered. In this example, we program Intello to automatically start an impedance measurement when the potential of a battery reaches a certain threshold. We can do this after a charging and also after a discharging cycle of the battery. So we measure the impedance of the battery at a certain state of charge, SOC. Welcome to Intello. We start a procedure from the beginning. So we go to procedures. We press the plus button, create new procedure. We give it a name, this procedure. We can, for example, say, okay, we're going to do an electrochemical impedance spectroscopy measurement at different state of charge. State of charge. And in the descriptions, you can describe your cell, and we have a coin cell in the outlook coin cell holder. Main instrument, we can define what we have. We set high accuracy mode 10 volt because the coin cell won't exceed higher than 10 volts. Okay, potential volt, current, amps. So that's the definition and what the instrument needs to do at the end of the procedure, it switches the cell off. Okay, this is my procedure. So this is the name, EIS at different state of charge. In the first apply settings, we're going to define the charging current. So when we select it, we say charge current. We do that galvanostatically and with a 0 0.3 amps. You see that the red arrow is popping up which means that probably in the current range uh, we have to modify. Okay, we switch the cell on. We stabilize for two seconds. And in the more button, we can modify the current range. So we set this on one amp, for example. And then you also see that the error message is gone. We also have control group is automatic and oscillation protection is also on. Then we're going to record the signal. So we're recording a potential back. We apply a current measure potential back and that's done in the record signals command. Give the name as well, charge time for let's say 60 seconds and an interval time of 100 milliseconds. We have a data point. Yeah. We're going to measure the potential, but you can also measure the current. But this is what we apply. In the rules, we define at which potential the procedure has to stop or the command has to stop. And this is with the plus button. So when a certain potential reaches a certain limit, so if it becomes bigger than a certain value, and this value we set to the state of charge upper limit, 
print vente. Bon, puis, par contre, s'il y a this. What the instrument needs to do, it stops the command. This is rule number one. Well, the limit which we are going to define is 4.1 volts. And this we can link to the main parameters. So you can modify uh, this automatically the next time you want to use this procedure. So it stops the command and then it goes to the next command. And the next command is an impedance measurement. And this impedance measurement is done potentiostatically. So we have to switch from galvanostatically to potentiostatically. And in between we have to switch the cell off. So we have a command switch cell off, off, and we do this for two seconds. Then we're going to create potentiostatically an impedance measurement. So we have we switch to potentiostatic. We apply the same value as which we have defined as the upper limit. So the state of charge is 4.1 volt. So we use 4.1 volt as the DC value. We switch the cell on. At the stabilization time of two seconds. And again, in potential statically, you can do automatic current ranging, but we start with one amp because we also left at one amp. The, this is all applied. Yeah. And after this is finished, we can drag and drop an impedance frequency scan, this one here. Here we define the frequencies, let's say from 10 kilohertz to 10 hertz. This is only for uh, to speed up the process, but you can go lower in frequencies, of course. But this is just to show uh, how fast we can do this. We can optimize for the main frequencies and we can also apply stabilization time as well. So that's all done. Then after this is finished, we go to the discharge step. So we have our charge step here. Oh, the name is not good. So modify always back the commands. And we now go again to my discharge current. So my discharge current, we're going to switch back to galvanostatic. And I also need to switch the cell off here. Switch cell off for two seconds. Yeah. Apply settings, Galvan aesthetic. We discharge with minus 0 0.3 amps. We should sell on. At stabilization time of two seconds. And we're going to apply also the oscillation protection. So this is all defined and this is called the discharge current discharge current like this now we're going to add the record signal again to measure the discharge time discharge time for 60 seconds. We're interested in the potential on the current and we set now the lower limit so we can modify this to rule number two. 
and we define the state of charge lower limit in volt. No, and then we say smaller than. And then we define the value 2.8 volts. So when the voltage is lower than 2.1 volts, this command will stop and it will go to the next command. Again, this we can link to main parameters. And in here you'll find the main parameters which you can use uh, if you want to use this procedure for the next time. Yeah. So these are the rules are set. We go back to my procedure. Let's check if I have everything. Yeah. Then after the measurement is finished, we switch the cell off. Off. And the stabilization time of two seconds. Then we switch back to potential static again, because this was galvanostatic, as you can see. And the next measurement is in potential static. We define again the DC potential of the state of charge. And that's 2.8 volts. We switch the cell on. At the stabilization of two seconds. And in here, again, oscillation protection. And the current range is set automatically because that can be done in potential step mode. In galvanostatic mode, it's not possible to automatic current range. So the potential set is set, and then we measure. The impedance again. Impedance is from 10 kilohertz to 10 hertz. Optimize the main frequency and stabilization time of 20 milliseconds. So this is my procedure, and at the end, I can switch the cell off again. Like this. So my procedure is finished. Everything is set. And the only thing which I have to do now is drag and drop the procedure inside my Vionic. And then I can uh, connect to a certain database like shared projects. So it will be stored in this data folder. I'm missing one thing, and that's the plots. So I'm going to drag the measurement commands and I'm interested in the potential first time. Create. And I can do the same for the discharge time. E versus T. And it will automatically change this to color. I do the same for the impedance measurement. So the first measurement, I'm only interested in the Nyquist plot and the discharge impedance measurement again the necklace spot so now my procedure is completely finished everything is set and i can start the measurement so you can follow at which position the measurement is we can also follow, so this will go up to 4.1 volt because that's the state of charge upper limit. And when it reaches 4.1 volt, it will automatically do an impedance measurement. So you see, 38 seconds is already uh, busy with. And so it's counting down to 1. But you see that it's reaching the first rule. So it's reaching the first rule, 
and it will automatically go to the impedance measurement. At the end in the activity log you can see what is happening. So the first rule is executed at 34 seconds. So you can see and follow which rule has been executed at what time procedure. The first impedance measurement is finished and then we're going to discharge again. And with the discharge current of minus 0.3 amps, you can also see that in the plot, in the monitor of the Vionic, we apply minus 0.3 amps and we can go back to the procedure and you see that the discharge potential goes down to a limit of 2.8 volts. And when it reaches 2.8 volts, it will apply an impedance measurement. So these steps, the charging and the discharging, is done galvanostatically, and the impedance measurements are done potentiostatically. So we can easily switch between galvanostatic and potentiostatic. The nice thing is that you can directly see the changes of um, the impedance measurement with a different state of charge, as you can see here in this measurement. You directly see the influence of the state of charge with respect to the impedance measurement. That's clear and obvious. In the activity log, you can see rule 2 is executed after 1 minute and 57 seconds. Thank you for watching Intello videos. If you found this Intello video helpful, please like and share with your colleagues. You can subscribe to the Metrum Odlab YouTube channel so you are notified when new videos are available.